Today we're talking about Greta Van Fleet. This is a band that's had a lot of success since they emerged back around 2017. They really took off from there with their debut EP. And there have been a lot of criticisms as well, a lot of comparisons to Led Zeppelin, their vocalist Robert Plant, with Robert Plant himself also getting in on the fun. And so in the past, myself, I've made a little bit of fun of Greta Van Fleet as well. And I'm gonna kind of talk about where I'm at now with them. Uh, I thought this was an interesting subject to bring up because I saw a new interview with their guitarist that I thought was pretty insightful and interesting. And we're gonna look at that in just a moment. First, I wanna give you a little background for those of you who are not familiar on where these guys came from because at this point, Greta Van Fleet is a bona fide, very big band in rock music. They built their own fan base. I think they have a fan base across age groups. Yes, there are a lot of those older fans, nothing wrong with that, by the way, but there's those older fans who kind of long for that sound of the past. They grew up with Zeppelin, they love them, and they kind of see these, you know, what the, these young kids, as they would probably refer to them, uh, really killing it, and it gives them a nostalgia fa factor. I think that's especially was a big part of how they got the band off the ground, but unmistakable is the musical talent that every member of this band possesses. You cannot take anything away from them. If you look at the way they play, these are consummate professionals. And also over the years, what I really respect about them is that they've taken a lot of shit from people and uh, they've just maintained their poise and just keep getting bigger and just keep winning. And um, you know, they've got that kind of dog mentality where I don't think they're phased by this stuff. And um, you know, they've just really, handled their business well and look at where they're at now. I've never met these guys, I've never talked to them, I don't know anyone even associated with them, but just watching and listening to them develop over the years, I kind of sense that this is a group that is gonna be here to stay and we need them in rock, they're important in rock. And I think there were a lot of questions about the staying power you have as a band. But look, let's just look at kind of how they got started. They emerged really from a town that I'm gonna kind of botch here, uh, Frankenmuth, Michigan, uh, that's where the band formed. You've got three brothers in the group, Josh Kiska, Jake Kiska, Sam Kiska, Josh on vocals, Jake on guitar, Sam on bass, and Danny Wagner on the drums. These are longtime friends, all coming up in that Michigan area. Uh, to the point that these are industry plants, which uh, people will also say referring to them, I really don't think the music business is very active in Frankenmuth, Michigan. Uh, so I actually think they're just a really sick band that got discovered and got an opportunity. And if I thought they were industry plants, I would, uh, I would definitely say that. But where they came out was in March of 2017, they released the single Highway Tune. This was like their, you know, unveiling to the public. This is kind of their debut uh, on the big stage. It immediately took off and became very popular. And this was on their debut EP, Black Smoke Rising. That came out in April of 2017. And so they have already won a Grammy Award for Best Rock Album for their album From the Fires. That was in 2018, so they're a Grammy Award winning band now. The Grammys, I think, have waned in popularity, but they're still important and um, they're reflective of certainly what the industry would think of this band. So they're, they're, in 2018, they released their album, Anthem of the Peaceful Army, and I should note they won Grammy Award for Best Rock Album for From the Fires, but it really was a double EP, but I guess it got counted as an album. But their true debut record was Anthem of the Peaceful Army in October of 2018, which is kind of amazing that you won a Grammy before you released your debut album. Um, so their continued success, uh, they've toured extensively, they've grown, they've become you know, a ticket sales force as well. And uh, it's so important to highlight the success that newer bands, uh, particularly over the last 10 years, have had um, really since Rockfeed's been in existence. Um, there hasn't been a lot of bands penetrating into what I would refer to as the mainstream. And I would say that a band like Greta Van Fleet is definitely in the mainstream. I want to look really quick. I haven't even looked at this at what they're doing in terms of uh, monthly listeners on Spotify. I have no idea what they're doing, but we're gonna take a look together. And we're gonna, wow. So uh, 4.6 million monthly listeners. Um, you know, if you wanna compare that to like, let's say Deftones. Deftones are doing 9.8 million. You wanna look at Slipknot, let's see what they're doing. That's a band by comparison, 12 
million. Um, okay, so just kind of gives you an idea of where they're at in the long game of streaming numbers. Bring Me the Horizon, 13 mil. This band's actually absolutely blowing up. Nirvana, for context, you know, one of the strongest catalogs in rock music. 28 million monthly listeners because those are some of the biggest rock songs of all time. So this is a fast emerging band. And, and by the way, just for context, just to put into context how big Sleep Token is getting, they just passed 3 million monthly listeners and they really popped in January of this year just to give a backstory on how shocking their rise has been and we talked about them the other day. We're gonna go to what Robert Plant had to say about Greta Van Fleet that really ruffled, I think, some feathers. Uh, I think he was joking. I think he actually likes Greta Van Fleet, but um, some people thought he was kind of taking a dig at them. But this is what he said. He says, they are Led Zeppelin. He continues, he talks about their vocalist, Josh Kiska. He says, he's a beautiful little singer. And he goes, I hate him. It's important to note when he says that, he's, he's laughing. Uh, he's joking around when he says that. He uh, says, yes, and he borrowed it. The interviewer says he had a huge voice. And he goes, yes, and he borrowed it from somebody I know very well, Robert Plant responded. And he goes, but what are you gonna do? That's okay. So he feels like he borrowed the voice uh, from him. When I go back and read it, it's kind of like, okay, he's kind of half playing, but maybe he's kind of not. Uh, and so first I also want to read what Jake Kiska is now saying about what the legacy of the band is and where they're at today with the public perception from a lot of this Led Zeppelin stuff they've gotten over the years. And I'm going to give you my thoughts on my kind of evolving view on them as well, uh, where, you know, I've kind of made fun of them a little bit. And uh, this is what he had to say, though, in this new interview. This interview is from Total Guitar. I've linked to it in the description. Now, the first thing that jumps out to me with uh, what he says looking at this again is kind of what I alluded to earlier, which is that the band really did not back down and they, they didn't shy away from what they do and they embrace what they do. And I do think that they're getting respect from people. Um, you know, not that it should be that way, but I, I do think that now that I've looked at how they've been for years and I'm just like, I really dug into them and I'm like, no, there's more depth to this than people realize, even I realized uh, now. And especially hearing more music from them, I think they've developed a little bit away from that sound to where, you know, there's a differential for sure. And also, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. I really love hearing your perspectives and I have learned a lot from people who've come out. There's always people with crazy stories like, Man, I went to a show one time and I read it. And I'm like, oh shit, I didn't know that. So please tell me what y'all think in the comments as always because I genuinely give a shit about that. Um, look, he goes, I think one major thing has culturally shifted in the journalistic approach to what we're doing. One major factor of this being we've stood our ground. We were going to do what we were going to do regardless. It's not like we're going to deviate from our approach based on a few mere words that are brittle and fickle, he told the outlet. He continues, I think people have realized that we're sticking around and this is who we are, so they now need to take a second crack at exploring the depth of what us guys are actually doing for our generation and for rock and roll music. Uh, he goes on to say, we are creating something that is authentic to us artistically. This is who we are and what we sound like. We're not hiding anything from anyone. Um, so. It's very interesting that he shared that and I liked what he had to say and uh, the dude can play the shit out of a guitar, I'll tell you that. This is the thought that occurred to me that really, um, it really stood out to me. And uh, it, it, I think a few years ago, I wasn't really in a headspace to, to realize this, but so much has changed in music in a few short years and I've seen it and it's been shocking and um, where rock music is going um, in some ways, I'm more optimistic than I've been, but also in some ways, I'm more concerned than I've been. Um, the optimism comes from bands like Greta, like Sleep Token, like Bad Omens, um, like Slaughter to Prevail. Um, a lot of these bands I see that have the potential to really move the needle in rock going forward. Um, of course, Spirit Box. Um, you know, there's a lot of bands that are exciting that I think are, are interesting that are going to go on. Um, you know, on the kind of country rock side of things, people like Hardy, Jelly Roll, I'm super optimistic. Um, the continued kind of overlap of that country music audience and the rock audience is something that, you know, for me being from Virginia, I've always felt like there is an overlap and there's room for, 
you know, that distorted guitar is really prevalent these days in country music. And so uh, it sounds a lot like rock music at times. And I've, you've seen in podcasts, I've brought that up with musicians who tend to agree. But um, with Greta, what occurred to me was that we're entering in an age of a lot of fake shit, a lot of, you know, for instance, Kiss is gonna be putting on avatar performances where they're just 3D holograms on stage. And um, I think people are gonna start going to see things like that and spend a lot of money. Uh, will it be big enough to reduce the market share of live entertainment? It remains to be seen. But I think that that kind of thing is going to increase as time goes on. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm really not. I'm, uh, it's a little concerning to me and it's a little dystopian to me. Um, but at the same time, just out of you know the tech nerd in me, I would probably go see it one time and then never again. Um, how you scale that yearly is a whole nother thing because for one, a lot some people are they're going to go to the shows. Part of the experience is getting to see this celebrity that you've looked up to actually in front of you performing the music. That's what makes it unique, and I think you take a little bit of that away when it's like you're just you're you're lining Gene Simmons' pockets, but Gene somewhere else, you know, sitting by the pool. And so, um, and by the way, in a well-deserved retirement, they earned their retirement. I'm not. Like they, they earned it. So, and that's, that's a pro in their, in their direction. It's not as if Kiss is just like, we're just taking off and now we're like, they're selling the avatar now that they're not around anymore. So it's not really like they're gone. So they're just adding something for fans who maybe want to reminisce. I, I, I am sympathetic to that, but these guys in, in Greta Van Fleet are really pushing distorted guitar and your classic rock and roll music to a large generation of fans. I think it's really important. Even if you're like, hey, the music's not specifically exactly for me, I, I, I'm actually becoming a fan of enjoying their music and, and it's really grown on me a lot in the last few years. Um, I don't have any reason to say this. I wouldn't say it if it wasn't true. I don't even know those guys or anyone affiliated with them. But I just have, have been thinking about the state of rock a lot and where it's going and looking at the hate they've gotten. I'm like, man, these are actually the guys to get behind because they are this young band that's championing rock and roll. And uh, I, I just think they've taken a lot of shit on the chin and they haven't even really clapped back at that. And um, just with time, I've really grown to respect what they do. And uh, I have no problem saying I got it wrong on Greta Van Fleet, better late than never. But um, I just would like to hear your thoughts on this. It's just something I was thinking about today and um, reading his interview was interesting. Much love to those guys. I still haven't seen them live. I'm looking forward to catching a show. I've seen it on YouTube, but uh, they rip live. And uh, I haven't ever heard anybody say anything bad about those guys. And so um, it's just real interesting. And um, I just kind of wanted to recap that and see where y'all's heads are at on this, because I know a lot of you as well were like kind of like stuck on the, the thing. I just, you know, time kind of changes things. And I'm looking back and going, you know, I think I got that one wrong. Um, looking at what they're doing now and how they never back down. And I really respect that about them. So kudos to those guys. Let me know what you think y'all, much love. And um, again, I just wanted to tell you guys, it's been a really good year for me here at Rockfeed. And that is because of you guys and um, you know, I just I, uh, I just want to reiterate how much your support means to me. It means the world to me. And I'm grateful to do this. And uh, this is my dream job. So thank you for the support. And if you're new here, I would appreciate it if you subscribed.